Hello everyone and welcome to another VATSIM Australia Pacific instructional video. Today we're going to be showing our air traffic controllers how to connect to Euroscope using the audio for VATSIM system. A reasonably easy process but it is important that you have the software available to you before the launch so that as soon as uh, the VATSIM network comes back online you are able to control. You need to start by going to audio.vatsim.net slash docs. This website is where you can find information including the manual, information on features and what ATC clients and programs are available. There's also an FAQ section which you can find out more information about audio for VATSIM. Today we're going to be controlling with Euroscope. It is important to note that you won't need to update Euroscope as later versions of Euroscope don't work with our TATS mod. We have tested audio for VATSIM extensively and can confirm that Euroscope 3.1D will work, we just need to make a couple of changes to your client. All you need to download from Audio for VATSIM is the standalone client. This will be available for download from the 11th of October. We'll pop a link in the chat when it's available. When controlling on audio for VATSIM, it's almost the exact same process. You simply open Euroscope, select the sector that you would like to control at, click Connect, make sure all of your details are in and correct, and connect to the network. The primary difference that we need to do when we first connect is as we no longer use voice rooms with audio for VATSIM, we need to untune the voice rooms. Simply click on receive voice and untick it. This frequency should still be our primary and we still need to receive and transmit text. As I'm extending to tail and bend, I will need to make sure that I can receive and transmit text on that as well as Tasmania and Wollongong. All of the audio side of the new codec is handled through the standalone audio for VATSIM client. So we don't need any of the audio options inside of Euroscope, but Euroscope does still handle the text options. And we do need to make sure that we are tuning any frequencies that we are extending to, to make sure that text pilots are able to communicate with us. The next thing we want to do is open the audio for VATSIM tool. When opened, it'll look like this. If it's your first time running it, you will need to set up the settings. You can enter your VATSIM ID and password, what devices you would like to use for your audio settings. You'll also need to adjust your microphone volume to make sure that when speaking at a normal level, the band lights up in the green. You'll also need to set a push to talk button, which can be on a joystick, controller or keyboard. After you've done this, you can click OK. You'll only need to do that for the first time. After that, when opening audio for VATSIM, after you've connected, all you need to do is click connect. When you connect, this will automatically pull up your position from the network. It'll tell you that it's getting this information from the database. And there's currently nine transceivers that you are broadcasting on 
as Melbourne Snowy Centre. To give you an idea of where these transceivers are, you can look at the VATSIM map, afe-map.vatsim.net. I'll show this to you now. As we can see, I'm controlling Melbourne Centre. All of the green circles are transceivers that are around, located around my airspace. You can also click on them, it'll tell you who, who they are and their frequency. You can also see a red circle here. The red circle is a pilot ring. What this means is, if that pilot is within range of one of the ATC rings, they will be able to pick up, trans uh, transmit and receive on that frequency. As this pilot is within the green rings, he will be able to receive and transmit. All of these transmitters, sorry, all of these transceivers are linked to the one frequency of 124.0. As I'm extending, it's important to set up my voice, uh, voice settings in audio for VATSIM. To do this, all positions that you can log on to, so all centre positions, have been set up so that in this list, all of the positions that you could possibly extend to will show up. So logging on to Snowy, I can extend to Talamben, Wollongong and Tasmania if I wanted to. Today I will be doing that. So I simply need to hit transmit and receive on all of the options. As you can see my transceiver count has now gone up to 28, which means I'm simultaneously broadcasting and receiving on 28 transceivers. You do have the option of only receiving on particular frequencies as well, which means you'll receive on all these frequencies but won't transmit on any. You can choose to transmit on one frequency, three or all of them. However, a pilot who might be uh, on the ground in Adelaide will not hear a pilot that's on the ground in Melbourne because the transceiver in Melbourne won't reach all the way to Adelaide these frequencies are separate at the moment and pilots could talk over each other without realising. The way around this is to cross couple the frequencies. What we mean when we say cross coupling is if you are broadcasting on one frequency in Adelaide, that transmission will be rebroadcasted on all of the other frequencies if we cross couple all of them. The only disadvantage to cross coupling is if you receive a degraded signal, it may degrade further by the time it is rebroadcasted. Otherwise, aircraft that are on the ground at Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Canberra will all be able to hear each other even though they'll be on different frequencies. This will be the most common layout that you'll uh, use in audio for VATSIM. We'll move this to the side now as we don't really need it. Now I've got an aircraft on the ground at Melbourne. He'll be looking for IFR clearance soon. So we're going to enter his departure details now. Now, as I'm logged on as Melbourne Snowy Centre, inside the pilot client, I'll show as Melbourne Snowy Centre. They won't be able to see my other frequencies. It is planned to add this feature shortly after release. However, upon release, you will not be able to see the other frequencies. So it's important that you tell people what your other frequencies are in case they don't know. The best way to do this would be through your controller information.
This aircraft is on the ground at Melbourne, so they will be contacting Melbourne Snowy Centre for clearance. Qantas 442, Melbourne Centre, good day, clear to Sydney, via Docel, flight plan route, climb via the SID 5000, runway 16, Docel 9 to departure, escort 3173, departure frequency 124, decimal zero. Clear to Sydney, via Docel, planned route, Docel 9 departure, runway 16, climb via SID 25000, escort 3173, and departure 124, decimal zero, Qantas 442. Qantas 442. Qantas 442, Bravo 24, request push. Qantas 442, Bravo 24, pushback approved. Pushback approved, Qantas 442. To configure an ATIS, the audio for VATSIM server has an automated bot that works in the background. As Euroscope no longer uses the voice room format, you won't be able to put up an ATIS with the VATPAC sound files at the moment. We are working on this with the AFE development team. We do hope to get some files uploaded into the server-based bot. For now, to put up an ATIS, all you'll need to do is select your airport and pop in the correct text ATIS. Provided you have the text ATIS in there and correct, all you need to do is click connect. You won't need to connect to the Amazing. frequency and you won't need to click start multiple record playback. It's also important to make sure, again, in under Melbourne ATIS, we want to make sure we don't have receive or transmit voice ticked. Just receive, transmit text, and we also want to tick the ATIS button. By doing this, this will ensure that looking at our audio for VATSIM map, we'll be able to see that there is an ATIS available. Currently it does say that the ATIS is text only. This is as the uh, bot is currently undergoing work at the time of filming this video. You now see, however, as I have set up my range rings, that I now have visibility throughout the Tail and Men sector, Wollongong, Snowy and Taz. Sydney Approach has also come online. Where you see the air traffic control towers, on the ground they signify where a controller has their initial visibility point set to. My primary visibility point will be at Melbourne. For Sydney Approach, theirs is in Sydney. Aircraft that are on the ground at airports within these range rings and transceiver locations will be available, sorry, will be able to communicate with air traffic control. For example, an aircraft on the ground at Mildura will be able to communicate with me by contacting me on the tail and bend frequency of 125.3 as that transceiver is connected to the tail and bend frequency. However, an aircraft that may be on the ground at Horsham will not be able to contact me as they'll be outside of my area. Remember the aircraft itself doesn't need to be inside a range ring, just the aircraft's range ring itself. As the aircraft climbs, their range ring will get bigger, and you'll notice this. This means an aircraft that does depart Horsham will become, will start to receive coverage from about three to 4,000 feet. We'll go into a little bit more detail on how that works in another video. As you can see, the transceivers in the Wollongong area do cover all the way out to Dubbo and an aircraft on the ground in Dubbo will be able to contact Melbourne Centre, although as they will be towards the edge of that transceiver range, it is likely that their transmission will be of lesser quality than someone 
in orange. That pretty much takes us through how to connect to the VATSIM network using Euroscope 3.1D with TATSMOD and audio for VATSIM. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments or jump on the VATPAC forums, forums.vatpac.org and ask in the audio for VATSIM forum. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy audio for VATSIM.